Welcome to lecture 5.2, the Orbit Stabilizer Theorem. This is one of the most fundamental theorems on group actions. and We will state it, prove it, and see a number of examples. First, we need to define three important concepts about group actions, orbits, stabilizers, and fixed points. So let's suppose that a group G acts on a set S. And let's pick a configuration or an element in the set. So a little s in s. There are two natural questions that we can ask about s. First, what other states in our set are reachable from this element little s? We call this the orbit of s. It's everything that we can get to from that element. Next, what group elements fix little s. We call this the stabilizer of little s. Let's define this formally. Suppose that G acts on a set, and we're assuming it's a right group action, and that means that we have a homomorphism phi from G to s. The orbit of an element little s is the following set. We denote it as orb, O-R-B, of S. And it is the set, now this is a right group action, so I'm going to write S dot phi of G. If it were a left group action, it would be phi of G dot S. So it's a set of all S dot phi of G, where G ranges in the group. So think of it like this. Phi of G is the permutation that happens when you press the G button. So phi of g sends s to some other element in our set. So the orbit is everything that we can get to by hitting one of the g buttons in our group. The stabilizer of little s in the group is written as stab of s. We just usually say it's the stabilizer of s. And it's the set of all group elements, little g, such that s dot little g sorry, s dot phi of little g is equal to s. So the stabilizer, you can think of it as a set of all group elements that when you press the g button associated with them, again, think of a group action as a group switchboard, and every element has a button. The stabilizer are all of those group elements that fix s. And finally, the fixed points of the action are the orbits of size 1. We denote this as fix of phi, and it's the set of elements in big S that are fixed by every G in the group. So S dot phi of G equals S for all G. So if you think of the group action as a group switchboard, and every group element has a button, then this is saying Pressing any button in the group fixes S. Notice that the orbits of phi are the connected components in the action diagram. Let's revisit our, our example from the previous lecture where we had the group D4, which is generated by R and generated by F. I'm not going to write the relations in here. I'm just going to use this notation to say that is what it's generated by. And so R is this red arrow, and F is this blue arrow. So over here, we have on the left, we have this square of all zeros. And, it, and if you rotate it 90 degrees, or if you flip it across its vertical axis, it sends it to itself. Now over here, we have these two checkerboard squares. If you rotate this first one 90 degrees, you get to that one. And if you flip it across the vertical axis, you get to this one as well. And similarly, doing those actions again sends you back to where you started. So we have these, this double red arrow and this double blue arrow. And the other four elements are over here. Let's start with this upper left, 0, 0, 1, 1. When you apply F to it, you flip it vertically sends it to itself, but when you rotate it, it sends it to this guy. 
Uh, here, when you rotate it again, it sends it down here. But if you flip vertically, you get sent to that one, and so on. The orbits of this action are the three connected components. Here's one orbit, here's another, and there's another. There is only one fixed point of phi, that's this square with all of the zeros, and the stabilizers of this action, well, let's go through them one by one, the stabilizers, or the stabilizer of this 0, 0, 0, 0 square is D4, because every element in D4 fixes this. The stabilizer of this 0, 1, 0, 1 square, well, let's see, it's, it's the identity going R squared, or doing RF, or doing FR, which is really R cubed F. Notice R, 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 F. So there's four elements that fix this. Turns out the same four elements fix the other one. You can just see that by symmetry. Let's look at this orbit on the right now. Let's start with the upper left square, 0, 0, 1, 1. The stabilizer of this, well, of course, it's fixed by the identity action, but it's also fixed by F. You can see this blue loop. And notice that no other element fixes this. If you have an R and you're over here and you can't get back unless you do R, 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 or R, F, R, which is just, which is actually just F. Next, the stabilizer of 1, 0, 0, 1. Well, let's see how you can, what paths start here and end up here. Obviously, the identity, but also, if you start here and you go R, R, F, then you wind up back here as well. So the stabilizer of this element is E and R squared F. And it's easy to check that none of the other six elements stabilize this. Next, the stabilizer of this square in the lower right is also E and F, because the identity obviously fixes it, but so does F. This blue arrow is a loop. And finally, this element in the lower left is stabilized by E and also by R squared F. So, observations? Do you see any patterns? Let me point a few of them out, and then we will prove them in the next few slides. First of all, the stabilizers, at least in this example, are subgroups of D4. So we have D4, these, these are subgroups, and these are subgroups as well. What else? Well, as the orbit got bigger, the stabilizers got smaller. Here we have an orbit of size 1 and a stabilizer of size 8. 8 times 1 is 8. Here we have an orbit of size 2 and a stabilizer, and each of these has a stabilizer of size 4. 4 times 2 is 8. And here we have an orbit of size 4. The stabilizers, they're not all different, but they all have size 2. And 4 times 2 is 8. And this, this should make sense, is that as you get a bigger orbit, there's more possibilities for where an element can get mapped to. And so that takes up more group elements, and so fewer group elements should stabilize, these should fix these elements. Whereas over here, there is no other possibility for where this element can get mapped to, so everything has to fix it. And here's an intermediate case. This is a small orbit, so there's not many possibilities for where this thing can get mapped to, so there's a lot of things that are going to fix them. Let's prove that first observation as a proposition. Here it is formally stated. For any set element S, the stabilizer of S is a subgroup of G. I'm actually just going to outline this because I'll have you do the details on the homework. So to show that the stabilizer of S is a group, we need to show three things. It contains the identity. In other words, that is, if you start with S and you press the E button, and you get back S. Inverses exist. 
That is, if you have a group element G that fixes S, then G inverse has to fix S as well. And finally, closure. In other words, if you start with S and pressing the G button fixes S, and pressing the H button fixes S, then pressing the GH button fixes S as well. Now you'll do this on the homework, but let me just make a few comments. So first of all, why does it contain the identity? So phi is a homomorphism. So that means that phi sends the identity. So let me remind you that phi is a homomorphism from G to the set of permutations of S. So that means it sends the identity element in G to the identity permutation. And phi of E is a permutation and it has to be the identity permutation. So it has to send S to S. Okay, so inverses exist. So let's suppose that phi of G fixes S. In other words, pressing the G button fixes S. Well, then why does pressing the G inverse button fix S as well? Let's see. So you have S. And here's, here's something that's obviously true. So this is equal to S phi of E, right? S dot phi of E. Well, now I can write this as S dot phi of G times G inverse, right? I can write this as S dot phi of G dot phi of G inverse. I'm just using rules of a group action. And now this thing here is S. So S dot phi of G inverse is equal to S. And finally, why does closure work? So if S dot phi of G is S and S dot phi of H is S, well, the thing you want to do is you want to take this S dot phi of GH and write it as S dot phi of G times phi of H. And by rules of a group action, we can put parentheses here. That is just S. And that is, this is S, and this is S dot phi of H. And that, we claim, has to be equal to S. Why is that S? Because that is S, that's phi of H, and S dot phi of H equals S. Okay, so I said you'll do this on the homework, but I pretty much gave giveaway hints here. But I still want you to write it up formally. Here's an important remark. The kernel of the action, phi, now remember, phi is a mapping from G to the set of permutations of S. So the kernel of this is a set of all group elements that get sent to the identity permutation. So the identity permutation fixes everything in S. So the kernel of the action is a set of all group elements that fix everything in S. Formally, that is the kernel of phi, is all little g and big G, such that phi of g equals the identity, that is the, the identity permutation in terms of group actions. That means it's a set of all group elements such that s dot phi of g equals s for all set elements little s. In other words, pressing the g button fixes everything in the entire set. That's what the kernel is. Notice that the kernel of phi is the intersection of all the stabilizers for every set element. Because the stabilizer of S is something that fixes S. So the set of elements that fix everything in S is just the intersection of those stabilizers. At last, we come to the orbit stabilizer theorem, the main topic of this lecture. 
This is one of the central results of basic group theory. It says that for any group action phi, again that's a homomorphism from G to the permutations of S, and for any fixed element in our set, the size of the orbit that contains S times the size of the stabilizer of S equals the size of the group G. Notice the size of the orbit, this is a subset of S, and the size of the, and the stabilizer is a subset of G. Let's prove this. Since the stabilizer of S is a subgroup of G, Lagrange's theorem tells us that the index of the stabilizer in G, that's the number of cosets of the stabilizer, times the size of the stabilizer, this is the size of the subgroup, is equal to the size of G. This is, this is just Lagrange's theorem. It holds for any subgroup H. So we're applying it to the stabilizer of S. Therefore, it suffices to show that the size of the orbit is equal to the index of the stabilizer in G. Because notice, what we have immediately from Lagrange's theorem is very similar to the orbit stabilizer theorem. The only difference is Orbit stabilizer theorem, we have the size of the orbit of S, and here we have the index of the stabilizer in G. So we just want, all we need to do is show that these two sets, or these two quantities, are the same. Our goal, how we will do this, is by exhibiting a bijection between elements of the orbit and right cosets of the stabilizer. In other words, two elements in our group send S to the same place if and only if they're in the same coset. So two elements in our group, think of those as two buttons that we're pressing, the G button and the H button. Those things have the same effect on S if and only if they are in the same coset of the stabilizer. Before we continue the proof, let's look at our previous long-running example to get some intuition as to why this should be true. And just to remind you, here is the orbit stabilizer theorem up here. We are seeking a bijection between the orbit of S and the right cosets of the stabilizer of S. That is, two elements in G send S to the same place if and only if they're in the same right coset. So here is our example from earlier. Here is a particular orbit that I'm picking. It's an orbit of size 4. Here's D4. And let's pick this element in the upper left right here, um, 0, 0, 1, 1. So this, first of all, here are the, well actually, first of all, I should do the, the stabilizer. The, the stabilizer of this is the subgroup generated by F. Again, the identity fixes this, and so does F. So here's the partition of the group D4 by the, by the right cosets of H. Here's EF, here's, or here's H, here's HR, HR squared, and HR cubed. And normally I write elements with the R first, so I would write this as R cubed F, I don't really need to. It doesn't matter here. So now here's my claim. Notice that S or pressing the G button sends S to the same place as pressing the K button if and only if G and K are in the right, same right coset of H and G. Let's check this. So these elements both fix this this square. So the identity and F, we've established that. Let's check this one, R and FR. So R goes here and FR goes FR. Do you see why that works? Because I'm starting it out with R that does nothing and then I'm applying, or F that does nothing and then R. Next, H 
r squared, these two elements. So start here and do r squared. That gets you to the same place as if you do f r squared, obviously, right? Because I'm doing f first. That doesn't do anything. That sends you back to where you started. And finally, this last right coset, r cubed and f r cubed, will start at this upper left square and go r cubed. That gets you down here. Or do f r cubed. That gets you down here. So now do you believe me? Let's recap what we're trying to, what we're trying to do. We are seeking a bijection between the orbit of S and the right cosets of the stabilizer. In other words, two elements in G send S to the same place if they are in the same right coset. So in this case, we have a... Let me switch colors here. So this left, this left coset, which is the subgroup, sends you to the original element. This left coset sends you to that one. This left coset sends us there. And this coset sends you there. So we have a bijection between the orbits and the right cosets. And hopefully you can see why two elements in G send this square to the same place if and only if they're in the same coset. Okay, now let's prove this formally. Throughout the remainder of the proof, instead of writing stab of s, I'm just going to call it h. So our proof is an if and only if, so we have to do both directions. So for the forward direction, we're trying to prove that if two elements send s to the same place, then they are in the same coset. So let's suppose that g and k two group elements, both send little s to the same element in our set. This means that s dot phi of g equals s dot phi of k. In other words, pressing the g button and pressing the k button does the same thing to s. Now, we can multiply both sides, or I should say multiply on the right both sides of this equation by a phi of k inverse. And the right-hand side of this equation, we get s dot phi of k times phi of k inverse. That just becomes the identity. And the left-hand side, we get s dot phi of g times phi of k inverse equals s. Now, what do you think we want to do now? Well, how about moving the inverse to the inside? So we can do that s dot phi of g times phi of k inverse equals s. What do you think is next? Well, what do you want to do when you see phi of g phi of k inverse? Of course, you want to write it as phi of g k inverse. Use the property of homomorphisms. So this tells us that g k inverse stabilizes s. In other words, I start with s, I press the g k inverse button, and I get back to s. That means that g k inverse is in h. Recall, h is just my notation for the stabilizer. So if g k inverse stabilizes s, then g k inverse is, is in the stabilizer. Next, if this element, g k inverse, is in h, then if I multiply that element on the right of h, so in other words, I just look at this right coset, h, g, k inverse, then I get h, because this element is in h. So now what? Now I just, I'm going to take k, I'm going to multiply on the right, both sides by k, in other words, I, so I bring k over to here, and I get that h, g equals h, k. And that's exactly what I wanted to prove. If we had two elements that send s to the same place, then they are in the same right coset. Conversely, if two elements are in the same coset, then they send s to the same place. So let's take two elements, g and k, 
in, in our group that are in the same right coset of H. Of course, that means that HG equals HK. This, of course, is the last line of the proof of the forward direction. And I claim that we can change each arrow, each right arrow, into an if and only if, and then conclude what we started with originally. In other words, I, I started with this here, and I have these forward implications, but really, these are all double, these are all if and only if. I can make these reverse arrows, and I'll let you verify that for yourself if you want to, but well, we'll start with one. If hg equals hk, then it's certainly the case that hgk inverse equals h. I just multiply both sides on the right by k, by k inverse. And if this holds, then this element in front has to be an h, right? So that just means gk inverse is an h. And if h is a stabilizer, that means pressing the gk inverse button fixes s, and so forth. And we get back to where we started with. In other words, if two elements are in the same right coset, then they send s to the same place. Lastly, if we have instead a left group action instead of a right group action, the proof carries through exactly as above. It just uses left cosets instead of right cosets. So I think I said this in the first lecture. Most the left actions and right, right actions are different, but pretty much all of the proofs and the results for, for left actions have analogous results and analogous proofs for right actions. In the next lecture, we will see a variety of examples of group actions involving groups and subgroups and cosets. So for example, a group, we'll see how a group can act on itself, we'll see how a group can act on its cosets, and we'll see how a group can act on its subgroups. By, and there are several ways to do this. For example, by conjugation, by left multiplication, by right multiplication. And by doing this, we will actually see, we will get some very slick proofs of some very deep results in group theory. So stay with us.